So hello, um, thank you for uh, joining my session. Uh, today I would like to talk about the, the extra boot configuration and the kernel command line. Um, okay. So uh, let me introduce myself at first. I'm Masami Hiramax. Um, I work for Renaro as a senior tech lead for uh, the member uh, landing team. And um, in the uh, kernel, uh, Linux kernel development, I'm responsible for uh, the KProbs and boot config and uh, uh, its related uh, tracing features and tools. Okay, uh, so let's start today's talk. Okay, uh, here is uh, today's agenda. Um, after, uh, I will start uh, from uh, kernel command line and uh, extra boot configuration and uh, boot config API and uh, uh, how to uh, combine the uh, boot config uh, with a kernel command line. So uh, for the, uh, oh, uh, before that, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel, uh, feel free to ask me on the uh, Matrix chat. I will uh, answer on the, uh, in the uh, question time. Yeah. So uh, the uh, kernel command line. The, uh, the kernel command line is a way to pass the uh, boot, config, uh, boot options uh, to the kernel. So uh, it passes a long string uh, of the options. And uh, uh, the, the string is actually pa uh, passed in the early stage uh, of the kernel boot. It actually uh, has a different implementation uh, because uh, uh, depend on the architecture because the boot protocol is different. So, uh, for example, on x86 it passed uh, over the memory area, but on the uh, ARM64 it uses the uh, device tree to pass it. So, uh, by the way, uh, the kernel command line has uh, some uh, kind of limitations about the size and the coding. So the, uh, the command line size is usually uh, under uh, 4 kilobyte. Oh, so, yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> this is our, the, uh, okay, slide. Um, and uh, uh, also the uh, command line uh, must be written in a single line of the code. And uh, uh, also, uh, uh, it has a fixed parameter API. So some uh, param uh, hooked API uh, is uh, provided uh, with a fixed key. Of course, uh, this is uh, actually enough for major usage of the parameter setting because it's uh, the, just uh, setting the parameter. So that uh, the parameter key uh, usually is the, uh, the fixed key. But uh, uh, if we have uh, some uh, uh, nested patterns uh, or uh, patterning keys, uh, parameterized keys, um, it's hard to support it. So uh, to uh, solve um, this, um, yeah, uh, to solve this, um, I introduced the, the, the extra boot configuration. So what is the uh, extra boot configuration? It is a new kernel command line uh, extension. I call it as a, a boot config for short. Uh, this uh, boot config is a plain ASCII text uh, of the tree structure, the key value list. Uh, you can see that. And it's something like uh, uh, syscontrol.conf uh, uh, file, but more structured. And uh, uh, it is uh, loaded with the uh, internal image, and uh, in, in, there is an in kernel API for uh, using that. So, uh, 
So here is the uh, some uh, uh, one uh, example of the uh, kernel command line. There are uh, some uh, let's say the commands uh, options in there uh, in there, and if you use the boot config, this uh, will be uh, written uh, uh, like this. So uh, compared with the uh, command line, uh, you can easily uh, understand what uh, is said and why, uh, because there, are, um, let's say, um, there, there is uh, some command uh, comments on the files, and uh, uh, each uh, the parameters, um, let's say, uh, separated. So okay, uh, so uh, how? How to write the uh, boot config file like this? Uh, let me explain it. So here is the, uh, the basic uh, syntax of the extra boot configuration. Uh, it consists of the, the simple uh, key value list. And uh, the keys are the dot uh, connected words. And you can set the value uh, for the key or uh, array of the values uh, with a comma separated list. And uh, um, uh, if there uh, you have uh, same keywords in the, uh, the the keyword, you can merge it. Uh, for example, uh, the, if there is a key dot word one equal value one and a key dot value two equal value one uh, value two. So uh, uh, these uh, these have the uh, same key uh, keywords. So you can write it uh, as a uh, key uh, brace uh, word one equal value one and word two equal value two. So it's like a C uh, structure, a data structure. So uh, there is a uh, here is a. Uh, what's a value assignment operators? We have three assignment operators. The the simplest one is the equal. It defines the value of the key. And current equal uh, is uh, uh, for uh, override the, the the previous assignment. So that uh, if we have our two uh, what's a assignment. And after one is uh, this one is uh, uh, the colon equal the uh, the key uh, was a key uh, value it's uh, uh, pairs uh, was a updated and the plus equal uh, will append the uh, the value uh, to uh, the previous value so that uh, if we have a uh, key equal foo and key plus equal bar. Uh, it's same as a uh, key equal who and uh, comma bar. So um, here is the uh, latest update of the, the boot config syntax. Uh, we can mix the key and uh, value on the same key. So uh, the parent key can have a value and sub keys and uh, um, uh, so that are, uh, you can uh, uh, share the, the, the parent key with the value and the sub keys. But uh, uh, note that you cannot uh, merge the value and the sub key uh, by brace at zero. So because that's a, we can uh, the, actually that the parser uh, cannot identify that uh, this one is value or uh, actual sub key. And uh, uh, oh, uh, the, uh, this is an important syntax, uh, the comment. So you can add a comment uh, in the boot config file. Uh, if you were put a comment, you can remember why that is set and uh, what's the meaning of the, the, uh, the settings.
So uh, here is some uh, example. Uh, sorry, uh, the, here is the uh, how we can uh, uh, expand the, the, the kernel command line by using the, the, the boot config. So uh, the actually the, the, the configuration keys starting with kernel dot uh, passed to the, the kernel command line. Um, so that's our, if we uh, here is an example. The kernel uh, root and the console, uh, this one is set, so that uh, those are uh, the parameters uh, passed to the, the kernel command line. And uh, if you are use the init uh, root key, then uh, uh, those are uh, passed to the kernel command line, but after double dash, so that uh, those are um, uh, passed to the init process directly. So, so as I said, uh, the boot config is uh, uh, passed to the uh, uh, passed via uh, int already, but how? Um, actually, that are, uh, the, there is a, a tool uh, to uh, append that the, the boot config file to the int already. So uh, the the kernel so in a kernel source uh, tree uh, tools and boot config boot config command will do that. So uh, if you uh, pass the, the your uh, boot config file uh, with a hyphen a option uh, the to the system uh, initaudi file, this will append the uh, boot config file to the initaudi. If you just pass the initaudi file, you can uh, check that uh, what uh, boot config is uh, applied. And also you can delete it with a D option. And uh, uh, if you pass that uh, your boot config file to the boot config command, uh, this will uh, reformat that uh, boot config file to the key value list. Okay. So uh, this actually figure out uh, how the boot config file appended to the initial the image on the memory uh, and uh, on the file. Um, so that our uh, boot config file is appended uh, right after the init lam fs uh, initial the image uh, with the footer data. So the kernel will uh, find that the footer and uh, decode it uh, and split the, the, the boot, config, uh, in, uh, boot config data from interd. But you also need to pass the uh, boot config uh, kernel command line option uh, to enable that. If you don't uh, pass the, the boot config um, option, uh, the kernel will just ignore that. So, uh, oh, uh, and uh, also, our uh, boot config provide the uh, what's a procfs interface after boot. So uh, the if you uh, cut uh, the dump that the the, uh, the proc uh, boot config file, uh, it will uh, show that the uh, the boot config data as a key value list as zero. Well. So that uh, you can um, use it from the uh, shell script or something like that. So, um, as I said, you can actually that the pass the uh, kernel command line option uh, via boot config, but you can also use that the, the boot config boot options uh, neatly. Uh, uh, what is the, the benefit of using the, the boot config the natively? Uh, the first point uh, is that you can use the, the structured key value list with uh, comment, of course. And also you can use the, the flexible option uh, syntax like this. Uh, because that are, you can use that are, uh, the, some uh, boot config uh, native API to parse uh, this uh, option. And uh, uh, to uh, uh, 
to handle the, the, the so this kind of uh, boot config uh, natively, you need to use the, the boot config API. Um, okay. So um, the uh, native boot config example, another example is here. The, uh, the boot time tracing is actually the, the one of the, the native boot config uh, client. So uh, if you can see that the, uh, this uh, the, uh, we'll say, uh, the boot time uh, tracing uh, with a histogram, uh, this one is actually very uh, likely to the, uh, something like uh, programming. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, normal uh, kind of uh, parameter is hard to make it, but uh, the root config is easy to do that. Okay, um, the, uh, here is the uh, root config API. The root config API is provided by your uh, include uh, Linux uh, boot config header. So there are uh, some uh, XVC prefixed uh, functions and the macros. The XVC node is uh, also uh, provided. That is the, the, the basement data structure. The boot config file is uh, also expressed by uh, the tree of the boot X, uh, XVC node. I will uh, explain it. And uh, for using that, uh, the boot config APIs, of course, you need to enable uh, the boot config, uh, config boot config. And uh, uh, note that you need to uh, use this, uh, these APIs from uh, init function at this moment. Okay, what the uh, XPC node? The XPC node is actually that uh, this uh, small, uh, the data structure. Uh, it has a four uh, field and first three field, <coughs> uh, what's we'll either uh, the, the point to the, the next node or the child node or parent node by your index number uh, of the each node. Actually that's uh, the max index number, uh, sorry, max number of the nodes is uh, 1024 so that are, uh, you need to um, uh, take care of the, the, uh, this uh, limitation, of course. And the uh, uh, data field uh, is an offset, offset of the data uh, uh, of the node. Uh, so that are, uh, but uh, actually that the highest bit is used for the key or value flag. So that are um, the max uh, conf uh, I'll say boot config file size is 32 kilobyte. So, um, so how the XPC nodes uh, was a parsed and uh, making a tree? Uh, here is an example. Uh, if you uh, parse that, uh, this uh, I'll say the uh, boot config file. This will be uh, uh, parsed and translated to this uh, tree. Uh, you can see that there are some uh, characteristics of the uh, XVC node tree. So the, the same subkey trees are uh, actually merged. So uh, like a param, uh, param is, uh, there are two params under the, tree, the key, but uh, uh, this, Params, uh, param node is uh, merged. And uh, uh, and also uh, the um, keys are not sorted. And uh, uh, no very key has no child node too. And uh, uh, the array is uh, uh, expressed expressed as a, a descendant uh, list of the child node. And uh, if there, you uh, mix the, the uh, value and the sub key on the uh, one parent node, um, the value node is always the first child of the, uh, the node, uh, the, 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 let's say the node tree.
So uh, what APIs are provided? At first, we have our uh, key value uh, uh, finders. Uh, you can find that the, the XVC node or the value uh, directly uh, find that the value uh, by your keyword with using the, the, this, uh, API, these APIs. Uh, you can find, uh, see that there, uh, there is a, some uh, the variant XVC find node actually that's a find that the, the node, but the uh, XVC node find the sub key uh, actually find that the, the node under the uh, given node, so that it's a partial tree search, and the uh, uh, XVC find value and uh, XVC node find value is also a same uh, relationship. So that the, the node uh, find value will uh, search the, the uh, partial uh, tree. And uh, uh, there are uh, some macros for iteration. Uh, so um, uh, here is our, uh, the first one is a key value pairs uh, searching macros. Uh, actually, that are the as you can see that are the, uh, I explained, uh, the key um, wrist, uh, let's say uh, the tree is key makes a, uh, with a key, sub key that makes the trees. So that are this macro uh, XVC for each, uh, for each key value is finding that the key value pairs, uh, this means that are it, um, uh, rest up the the, the, uh, the leaf node of the the tree, and uh, uh, also this one, uh, the next one, uh, XVC node for each uh, key, uh, key value is uh, the the what's it, uh, the uh, key value pairs under the node, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, if you uh, get that, uh, what's it, find that the the, the the uh, was a key has a, an array value. Um, this uh, macro will uh, help you to uh, reset up that the, the uh, each value of the array. And uh, uh, of course, we have a, a macro to reset up that the sub keys under the uh, one node, this node. And uh, we have our um, API for uh, composing the, the keys. Uh, what uh, this means, um, as you can see that the, uh, the node, uh, each node has uh, uh, its own uh, sub key name. So that's uh, we don't have, uh, it doesn't know that the full key node, uh, let's say full key name. So uh, this one will compose that, uh, the keys from node to uh, track back to the, uh, the parent node. So, uh, yeah, uh, and also uh, uh, we uh, have uh, some uh, APIs for XVC node, uh, let's say, uh, node accessors, so that, uh, uh, yeah, because that uh, each uh, field just have uh, some uh, index or the offset so that uh, these APIs accessors will uh, translate the, the, the index number to the uh, node, uh, what's a pointer or the uh, date pointer, uh, data address, yeah. And also node validators. So you can check that uh, the node is a key or value or something like that. It's LA or it's leaf or something like that. So uh, here are the some uh, uh, programming example of the root config API. Uh, this one is very uh, simple. You can find that uh, some uh, value from the key, uh, like uh, this is my parameter and uh, get the, the, bar, the value if it's set. So uh, if you can check that the value is varied, you can set up the parameter by value. And uh, uh, if you expect it that the, the parameter is an array, you can get the, the, uh, the value node, the first value node, 
and use that uh, XPC array uh, for each value to iterate that uh, the values in the array. And uh, uh, boot config API, another uh, boot config API program example is, uh, uh, for example, looping that are the parameters under some key. So you can uh, find that the, the, the sub key nodes uh, of the, the, the say, given node. I will show you the uh, more uh, actual uh, example of the, uh, the boot config API uh, programming uh, here. So uh, this one needs uh, another good example of the, the, uh, the boot time tracing. Uh, I will, uh, I, I just pick up some uh, uh, part of the, the uh, code from the boot time tracing. The, uh, for example, uh, if we, uh, we get the, the root key uh, node uh, from the, uh, the, the boot config, and if there is, the um, the actually that are uh, the boot and tracing support that are some instance node and uh, instance name uh, set up in in the key so that are uh, I can get the uh, the uh, find that the sub keys of the instance under the uh, this uh, f trace node and. If I found uh, the next uh, sub key will be the instance name, so that uh, uh, I will uh, yeah uh, iterate that uh, the sub keys of the uh, instance this instance keyword node. Then uh, I can get the, the instance node's name by uh, get data and set up the, the instance and uh, uh, set up that that uh, the uh, instance by using that uh, this uh, instance node. If we have no, uh, we, we don't have that. Uh, we can uh, use that uh, uh, the trace node. So that uh, this f trace node, uh, use, using that node uh, to uh, was we'll initialize that uh, uh, default instance. So very. Uh, was a simple code can uh, handle it. So uh, here is the uh, the was say uh, we we, will, we can see that there the uh, the difference between a boot config and uh, kernel command line APIs uh, from the API point of view. The kernel command line API is basically setting that uh, the fixed parameter so that the kernel parameter uh, param uh, was a kernel param API uh, extends the, uh, the parameters as a value with types. Um, the user can uh, define that the fixed parameters with actual variables in the kernel. Uh, but uh, uh, no interface to uh, search that the parameters. Uh, it actually does, yeah, currently doesn't need it. Um, but the uh, uh, boot config API is, is uh, completely different. Uh, it, uh, the probe function uh, need to search their uh, parameters in the tree, and it has no hook interface, and uh, all values are uh, treated as a string. The key structure um, is more uh, flexible than the, uh, the fixed key core value, as I uh, we saw, and the only uh, usable. Uh, but uh, uh, the the boot config API is currently only usable in a uh, boot time uh, because uh, it's a uh, init function and macros, and not able to handle. Uh, parameters in the kernel command line. I will uh, show that, uh, explain that. So the, uh, here is the uh, relationship between uh, uh, boot config and uh, kernel command line. So uh, the boot config 
uh, kernel started uh, key values uh, copied into the kernel command line uh, from the uh, boot config APIs when uh, uh, we uh, set up the, the kernel command line. Of course, uh, uh, init started uh, ones also are copied. Um, but uh, uh, the, uh, the bootloader uh, ex uh, specified parameters uh, doesn't uh, copy back to the uh, boot config. So uh, kernel command line APIs can uh, handle all of the, the kernel command line options. However, the uh, boot config APIs uh, cannot handle uh, the, this part. So my uh, let's see, uh, idea is uh, syncing that uh, the boot config with uh, the kernel command line. Um, this will allow the, uh, the kernel subsystem to use uh, boot config API for uh, handling the, the kernel command line options. Um, uh, so that uh, uh, the kernel module can uh, access the parameter uh, via uh, boot config APIs too. Uh, however, um, who the the question is uh, who needs it at this moment? Uh, so it's uh, like a chicken and the egg problem. The, the currently boot config APIs uh, the used. Uh, from the, uh, the boot time tracing only. So uh, boot time tracing, of course, the boot time tracing is uh, tracing for the uh, at the boot time. So uh, boot, uh, we'll say, uh, I don't need to, uh, we'll say, there is no reason to uh, remove that uh, the init uh, macro, uh, we'll say, uh, the, the tag from the, the APIs. Then uh, uh, no module can use the uh, boot config APIs because that the modules can be loaded uh, after boot. So <laughs> there is a like a chicken and egg uh, problem. So uh, but I so that uh, I'm uh, searching for the the first user of the or uh, the what's say uh, the no not first the second actual user of the. <laughs> uh boot time uh, apis uh, natively so if you have any usage ideas uh please share it on the lkml okay that's uh all from my uh, side so uh, i would like to uh, um uh, let's say uh, um answer the questions on the chat yeah, I saw her. Uh, yeah. Um, go back one slide. Yep. To who would use it? Um, actually, one of the problems I have with Ftrace is Ftrace seems to be one of the biggest users of this right now. Is yep. that there's a lot of command line options that I want to support that I just I just need a way to you know connect it. I just yeah. Use it. actually the command line options are not easy to use, not easy to parse. I believe the your API is much easier to find out what those options are. And for something like tracing, having access to the kernel command lines via the boot config API, I think would yeah. be much very beneficial. And so you don't need to set it. It could still be init. So basically, you could say core users could use this. Obviously, modules won't be able to use it because you, I think you want to free it up when, you know, at, after time of boot. But for tracing, since a lot of the command line options are used for uh, tracing kernel boot up, so maybe there's a crash and you want to dump on, you know, ftrace dump on oops or something. There's a lot. People keep asking me, can I, can I get this feature? At boot up, and I'm always like, no, because I haven't implemented it yet. And part of it is because it's such a pain to parse the command line, come up with a command line, you know, come up with command line data, but then parsing it is is a struggle. So this looks like you are, yeah. if you were able to move the stuff into, like, do the copy of the command line, because I don't think it hurts anything because it gets thrown out anyway. It's not that I don't think it would take long to just add those entries, everything that's in the kernel command line goes right onto the boot config. Then I could throw away all the boot config, or sorry, the command line parsing and just switch to boot config and that make my life a hell of a lot easier. So you do have one user that would appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Um, 
but the, actually, that the most of the the features, uh, F-trace features, already I already are uh, ported to the, uh, uh, say, boot time tracing. Right, but the thing is, there's a lot of people that don't use the like you don't even have an init RAM disk. I know oh, people that boot up stuff that don't have an init RAM disk, and this is all done from the kernel command line. Oh, I see. It's... So I want. I want the features of parsing the kernel command line from the, uh, like you said, I think back with other slide, you had it where you don't copy, uh, I think go back one more slide. Yep. Yeah, where, yeah, see here you don't copy, if someone puts something on the kernel command line, it doesn't get put back in the boot config, boot config. so I still have to if I want to parse the kernel command line, I have to go through the kernel command line APIs, which are not, yeah. not are not that trivial to parse. I mean, it's just string parsing. That's all it is. Whereas you actually break up the fields maybe a little bit better, um, per se. So I could just go through and have one function that says, here's all the things I'm going to handle. Because otherwise, you know, for the boot command, you have to have every every something equals, something equals has to be its own function. Where if I did the boot, if I just said, give me all the command lines, instead of just parsing the whole command lines, I just want to look at for search for these guys, find these options. So if you had the copy of the kernel command line into the boot config to the kernel, that would be useful for me. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I will try to uh, uh, also implement that uh, this one and uh, uh, see what happens. Okay, on the chat, I ha I saw some uh, questions. So, uh, uh, from the Kevin, uh, the Kron equal is a strange choice. Yeah, <laughs> it is actually that are from, uh, uh, let's say, I, I think that, uh, let's say, Kron equal is the absolute, uh, let's say, I, I'm that the absolute, uh, the define, uh, so that are, it's not assigned that, are, but the define there. Uh, just uh, possibly, so uh, I choose it. Um, and uh, uh, okay, um, oh, and uh, Scott Wood, uh, and what happened if you use the echo with the previous definition? Yeah, actually, it uh, just it it let's say it caused an error uh, in a uh, uh, passing. Stage actually that uh, when uh, you use that uh, the boot config command, the boot config command uh, shares that the same uh, parser with the kernel, the kernel code, so that uh, it uh, it checks that uh, the the uh, uh, what's say syntax uh, with the, the same parser and find that uh, uh, some uh, issues um, before uh, adding that are the uh, appending that are the boot config uh, file to the init LD. So you can find that the, uh, the error before that. And uh, can I, uh, Ruk, uh, Rukas, uh, from the Rukas, um, can I uh, compile in uh, boot config command line option? Uh, yeah, and someone uh, replied, I think, uh, yeah, if you use that, uh, so the, the Steve, yeah, Stephen lost it uh, already uh, replied, but uh, uh, if you set up the, the config or uh, command line uh, option uh, to the boot config, you can uh, also the, the boot config uh, command line option is uh, always uh, enabled. Uh, System uh, request first uh, new kind of command uh, from the Tyler. I have the same request. Uh, what uh, first a uh, new kind of com configure option that always owner to the boot config. Yeah, yeah. so that uh, uh, the yeah maybe uh, you can uh, also define that uh, the config uh, command line call uh, boot config to enable. Or uh, the boot config always, and does boot config uh, uh, prob uh, probing? Uh, sorry, pro uh, probing. Yeah, does the boot config uh, 
supplement replace the the standard kernel command line. Uh, yeah, it's all actually that uh, I think uh, the boot config is uh, uh, what's a uh, kind of um, what's a uh, complementary uh, option for the uh, kernel command line uh, because that uh, sometimes we um, would like to use that uh, the boot uh, the, to add uh, temporary uh, some uh, uh, options from the uh, bootloader uh, for the, uh, for example, uh, troubleshooting or something like that. Uh, so that are, it's not replacing the, 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 con the current kernel command line APIs, but uh, uh, it uh, complement, you can use it as a complemental um, uh, option. So it's it just uh, coexist with that. Uh, regarding modifications, uh, the kernel expects the boot config to be uh, appended to the uh, interim APIs. This means it can should be loaded, loaded by our boot loader. Uh, yes, uh, so that are, uh, you need to, uh, what's a uh, load that uh, init RD uh, from the root boot loader. And uh, yeah. I think it is uh, not uh, hard to uh, uh, other support, uh, other uh, boot config support to the bootloader. So that uh, uh, this means that uh, you, uh, the bootloader can also load the boot config file with the init LD. Yeah, uh, on the memory, something like that. Uh, okay. Um, Just like the the command line, will boot config file also be uh, be measured? Ah, uh, yeah, and this can be signed and verified. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Actually, um, current I, as far as I know, that the currently uh, init all the image is not signed and but the uh, the verified uh, or measured uh, by a TPM. So that uh, if you add uh, the boot config file to the init LD, uh, the it will be uh, automatically uh, measured uh, by your TPM. Yeah, if you uh, was we'll a but uh, if you uh, maybe you need to uh, update the the uh, um, the TPM um, was we'll a database or something like that for measurement boot. Okay, that's, uh, is it all of the questions? Uh, are there any other questions? Other that? I see that Lucas is typing as well. Okay. And there's, there was just another question. Okay. Um, the previous question, do any boot browsers currently support a modifying setting? Uh, in, uh, okay. The question is, uh, do any boot browsers currently support modifying setting in uh, boot config during boot? Uh, no, uh, actually not. Uh, no uh, boot loader uh, support it. But uh, it actually easy to, I think that it's easy to uh, do that because that's uh, the boot loader, uh, sorry, boot config first, so it's very small. And uh, um, yeah, what we need is just, uh, what's it? Um, copying the, the, the boot config, uh, the parser to the boot loader. Okay, uh, Lucas, uh, if you, uh, if our boot loader loads uh, an interamfs plus boot config, uh, does it set the size of interamfs uh, equal size of interamfs plus size of boot config? Yes, uh, the boot loader uh, must do that. So that are, uh, the init uh, the init MFS size must be uh, uh, increased by your uh, boot config size. Yeah. Okay. Well, Thank you so much, yeah. Masami San, for your presentation. Um, yep. Uh, there were a lot of questions, so definitely a lot of interest. Thank you very much, Steve, for coming on and participating. We'll give people another another quick second. Are there any more questions 
we can continue on the chat as well. Um, the, this was a great use of time as well. We have four, uh, 15 minutes left before the next presenter as well. Um, I'd like to join uh, Praven and Lucas for uh, the congratulations. It was a great talk. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much, Mr. Sam. It's very yeah. late for you as well. So an extra round of applause virtually on behalf of everybody for yeah. staying up so late. You, you deserve a good night rest. Uh, we're eating into your weekend already. So yeah. this is the small rule. Thank you for your participation. Again, uh, one more chance. Are there any more questions on the, on the chat or if somebody wants to come on on camera? Uh, some more links have, and references yep yeah if you have any uh, more uh what's your question you can uh, also find that uh, some more information uh in a kind of documentation okay uh, yeah okay thank you very much uh i hope you have a great day thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so, so much, Masami san This is a presentation on the new boot configs. Um, we're going to take a 15 minutes break now uh, for everybody that is joining the room now for the next presentation. Uh, we're going to be talking about Guider next. Um, so uh, for everybody that's in the room that wants to go to a different presentation or anybody here that needs a break, that includes me, um, please do so. We will be back here uh, in about 15 minutes to talk about uh, Linux tracing using Python. I have a feeling that we may have some more of Steve in here as well. So thank you very much, Peace, for being willing to present. And uh, everybody leaving us after the first presentation, thank you for joining. And those of you that are coming in for the next one, again, we're taking a short break and we will be back at the top of the hour to talk about uh, Guider together with uh, Peace Lee. Thanks, everyone.